everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. We have Nishi, Nidisanji Koshien 2024, Eikan 9 Session featuring Papuro 2024 to 2025, Hero Academy X Albo, Albio Day 2. So this is going to be basically them doing the thing they've already done it it's their uh koshien tournament <clears throat> continuing with the new koshien stuff and you know trying to i guess uh train and you know learn things along the line um it's just a, a little bit of what's going on in ichisanji koshien nothing uh, like crazy um nothing wild going on just a little bit of nidisanji doing well trying to do something with koshien because that's their biggest event of the year Koshien overall is the biggest event of the year. And Koshien, if I'm not mistaken, in Japan is the um, high school baseball championships. If I'm not mistaken, it's high school baseball. So just giving you a little bit of update on that in case you were interested. Niji Sanji forgets totally about the virtual real uh, CN group because Niji Sanji is um, one thing that people don't understand about virtual real. It's fully, fully done by Billy Billy, but Niji Sanji uh, gives their name to it and also helps with uh, technology helps with a little bit of the management side, helps with a little bit of the the uh, management when it comes to technology. Uh, first off, this post-discussion thread have been raising a lot of questions in regards to the particular group. Infamous Robert Nandi Di Sandi Cien, China, uh, is made out of malice, or is not made out of malice or in ill intent. This, these are the talents in Virtual Real, which is the Nidi Sanji Billy Billy collaboration. And they don't seem to be doing um, very much to uh, support their these people. But of course, I mean, if you look at everything else they've been doing for their actual talents, like the people they actually got in, not any collaborations or anything with anybody else, it makes sense that they're not supporting anybody because they don't do a good job of supporting their own people. Uh, we have a rewind back to November last year. As a well-known Nidhi Sanji Liver, who's 1.48 million followers, and number six most uh, follow VTuber on Billy Billy had uh done open had been done uh opening up their youtube channel oh so they opened up a youtube channel could have opened up possibilities for nidhi sanji to grow the virtual real group outside of billy billy but they didn't seem to want to so that's one thing that they're mentioning here and here's where they're mentioning you know the things that they've been doing the um for what they have they haven't been seeing a lot of growth that's kind of the way that the, the algorithm works that sometimes give you growth but sometimes they won't um fast forward early june virtual real decided to launch their group channel and based off of the views and sub count they did the same thing again, where they just launched a channel, post anniversaries, music, VODs. And they're try at least they're trying a little bit. At least Virtual Real is trying a little bit. Nidhi Sanji, on the other hand, is just uh, laying around and hoping that the money comes rolling in. That's one criticism I do have about Nidhi Sanji. In June, Virtual Real did that. In July, a few weeks later, a uh, couple more livers, Nana7Me and Azusa opened up their YouTube channels. And unsurprising with the recurring pattern presented here, no promotion. Uh, you know, basically, why wasn't there any promotion to this? Why didn't Nidhi Sanji bother making... Uh, a debut, YouTube a bigger deal. Uh, Virtual Real, like a lot of people are saying, is not Nidhi Sanji. It's a joint venture with Billy Billy. Billy Billy holds the majority of it. Nidhi Sanji just helps certain parts of it. All the rights over to characters. Uh, talents are signed with Virtual Real, not Nidhi Sanji. Uh, after Billy Billy sold all the any color stocks, at this point, the only thing between them is the app. So that's the thing. It, it is a question that is legitimate, but this it's easily explained with Nidhi Sanji. It's not their egg, not the eggs in their basket. It's not their basket that they have to deal with. So they are going to, you know, just go on and move their own things. It's not their own their own party they're having to to manage. It's not their own things they're having to manage. And even if it were, I mean, look at what they're doing with their own talents. Their own talents, unfortunately, have no support. I mean, I wish they did. I honestly wish they did. At the very least, if they decided to do that, you'd give them some positive, but they've done nothing. Just add a few, few more info, Virtual Real is also an independent company. Billy Billy is a shareholder in it, so that's the thing. But, you know, it still sucks. At least Billy, at least uh, Nidhi Sanji could give them some hints, some clues, connect them with some agencies to market their stuff. I don't know something, but that's giving Billy Billy too much, I mean, uh, Nidhi Sanji too much credit. And I guess that's asking too much of Nidhi Sanji too. This is becoming a PSA because I'm seeing a lot of this happen. I am by no means a Nidhi Sanji defender, but uh, just pure hate posts, um, it doesn't really do anything to help. Uh, I put them on there usually as kind of, you know, questions being asked and things like that. I try to turn it around. I try to make it so that it's more of a conversation instead of just hating on a specific library. This person just says that they don't feel right about it. Um, she always felt disingenuous. I don't know how to describe it. You don't vibe with her. Yeah, and that's it. You just don't vibe with her. That's it. I got a dude who shares hate boner for Anna because of her voice. 
Don't care for a bunch of the talent. They don't need to be bad people for me not to like the content. The talent produces, though I can just not vibe with their style, and that's fine. You don't need validation to not like someone. You can just not like someone. Uh, I think she's weird could apply to anybody and how vague that is. But yeah, everybody said she didn't vibe with you. So it's just like not, not a vibing. Don't just create hate for hate's sake as well. If you don't vibe with somebody, okay, you don't vibe with somebody. Uh, you don't necessarily have to post it if you don't want, you don't vibe with somebody. A lot of times, you know, of course, in a community, you are going to post these things because uh, some people, like myself, we don't get out in large social circles because, holy crap, they make me super anxious. Holy crap, they bring my anxiety up to a level of 11 when I get super in, like, in, in closer uh, groups. Like, that's why... I lose, I lose friend groups and things like that a lot because holy crap, number one, my autism makes it really weird uh, for me to be in social situations because I really am like bad. Like the notes that I have are like years old on how to be in social situations. So I am not the best in social situations. My autism, my ADHD, my anxiety, my depressive disorder, all that stuff piles upon each other. And I can understand, you know, not vibing, but I can't even get vibes sometimes. But that's why, you know, I can understand them posting this here. I can understand wanting to get validation maybe. I don't believe any of the drama that happened merely because I don't vibe with her and didn't like her content. So yeah, it's like, don't see them with those black tinted sunglasses uh, just because you don't like them. Uh, judge them based on what they've done. There are some things to criticize Millie for, of course, for what she's done, the things she said about, you know, Nidisandi not being a black company. The way she responded to Selene's tweet about, you know, um, Nidisandi taking away her video and things like that. Um, there are some things to criticize for, but, you know, it's not necessarily, it can become bullying and harassment if you go too far. So this is just kind of a PSA for you guys to, of course, and for me as well. That's why I always try to take things, you know, more calmly, more matter of factly looking at the stuff that's out there and uh being as objective as i possibly can a debate that i saw and i wanted to just highlight uh, a little bit of it not going to go over the the long post this is a long post as you can see but it's genuinely talking about um you know nidhi sanji and eddie cutter uh not really working to fix their relationship with things and with the community and um they you know getting people that are angry like this person saying, sometimes you want to see it burn to the ground, but you also want to see the talents cherish, uh, cherished and better. I don't want to see it burn to the ground. I want to see all of the current management leave and maybe they get new blood, new management, not interns, but actual talented managers in there to actually get some benefit for the talents. That's what I want to see. There are a lot of people who want to see the crash and burn of Niji Sanji. I prefer to be on the positive side. And yes, I want it to no longer exist as it is right now. And I want it to exist as something new. Uh, citing full on Luke in Minecraft, uh, Minecraft video. Yeah, people are, were going, people are sometimes are getting a little too aggressive with this. I understand being an anti. I understand not liking Niji Sanji. But some people wish people to be game ended. Some people wish people to actually disappear from this plane, this mortal plane. You know what I mean? Um, people try to paint the sub as hollow bro, jerk off. Yeah, some people try to paint the, the Kuro Sanji as hollow bros attacking um, Niji Sanji. And that is... A method to discredit what is going what is actually going on and what is actually going on is people criticizing the larger agency in order to try to get something good going and that is what is going on there like the people down here are saying I'm very openly hollow main but I'm here because I want to see Niji do right by their talents and undergo reform instead of just fizzling out uh, away and burning down yeah I don't want to see it burn down I really don't. First of there was my Oshi after Sana from Hollow Graduated. I liked her comfy vibe, her happy moments, but after the black screen stream, you can't really do that anymore. It is like the Lyra upvoted. You said the black screen stream was forced by Niji and not that Lyra's fault. Downvoted. It spiraled into more and more hate till I realized it's not any of the Liver's faults. Niji made the contracts. In the end, Niji decided to pull the trigger. They decided to let it get this far. And that's one of the people who got downvoted for that black for that back when we could still post that Niji sub. I still hold the opinion that the black screen was Niji. You know, a lot of people can have their opinions. That's why I like Kurosanji, that's why I use a lot of their stuff, because you see both sides. You see some schizo posts, like this guy freaking had a long post, a long post, but there are good ideas in here. And, you know, those schizo posts, I do post them out there sometimes. People say it's bottom of the barrel, but I like people seeing every single side to a story, every single side, even opinions out there. That's why I always mark them as opinions. I mark them as rumors. I mark them as questions. I mark them as something else because they aren't officially news. They are just questions and ideas and, um, you know, shooting ideas out there for the people on these forums. But I admit, I've been kind of meandering between the agencies looking for an Oshi. Yeah, and some people have switched to uh, like Idolian or they switched to Face Connect for their Oshis or they switched to someone else instead of Niji. When before they would have had Niji as an Oshi, now they don't. And that is the problem that Niji faces and they need to fix. All right, 
I wasn't going to do this, but I decided to do this because I always want to push people who have interesting ideas, new ideas, fun ideas out there. I like pushing that out there. I like showing it. This person has saw this on VT and has decided to make a newsletter right here, as you can see, um, on all the recent news this is for the 26th. Uh, it, a lot, it's getting a lot of positive press here. It's getting a lot of positive news. Keep going. Keep them coming. So inside his front page, why he was cooking. Uh, such a good format. This is interesting, making people interested in it. Even if the news is good, mid or bad, it attracts people to see it. It's a good idea. And it is like the best form of flattery is to, you know, have someone emulate what you do. This is emulating what's, what they saw on VT, which is turning something. VT is a lot of times seen as a cesspool. A lot of times seen as a place that um, isn't really great, but moving that into something positive, which is the news of the day, that is, uh, and moving it into this type of process here, it looks very nice. And I congratulate the person for doing it because I'm gonna keep putting it out there. This is an update on Sayu, who, if you remember correctly, last time we talked about her, she was feeling kind of down, which I can absolutely understand. I, I am so glad that she opens up about these things because there are a lot of YouTubers like myself who go through this. There are a lot of human beings who go through these things, a lot of human beings who have, you know, issues of uh, imposter syndrome and other things like this. VTubers as well. When you're a content creator, you have a lot of imposter syndrome. I do at least. Uh, I may be one of the few that does, but I feel like, you know, the imposter syndrome is, is rough. Holy moly, thank you guys for your support and kind words. I'm sorry that new issues and rough patches come up even still. That is absolutely natural, Sayu. Don't apologize for that part. Don't apologize for, for being yourself and being open and being, you know, raw with your with your community because I'm pretty sure they welcome it because that way they can help you out. I'll explain more on stream later tonight around 8-ish, which is going to be today at 8 p.m. Uh, but I've been trying so hard to make things work with what opportunities I have and so much has gone poorly outside of my control or requested advice. Uh, it's very frustrating and it makes me feel like I'm not capable of being anything more than stuck in a bad situation. I hope she doesn't feel like that. Like she gets that, you know, out of that rut because I have felt that way. I felt like I'm nothing but a negative Nancy, a negative Nelly or whatever you want to call it. And I, I, sh I shut down a lot of times when that happens because I'm like, I'm just bugging people with my BS. People have enough to deal with, with their own BS. And then I add that to theirs. It, I feel like it's unfair. I feel it's very unfair. And that's why sometimes I don't mention things that go on in my world. In fact, like 99% of the stuff that goes on, I don't mention. There's only a small percentage that I do mention because I don't want to be that person. Just like Sayu doesn't want to be that person. But I want to keep fighting. I'm horrible at ma marketing things in an appealing way or doing things that are in viral style, but I have so many silly and fun ideas that I want to show you all. I've been holding myself back a lot for fear if I should properly plan this out to get the best result. To be honest, I'm not good at planning, so I procrastinate and I never do enough. Enough of that. S is getting real which is good. It's good that she's having her projects. It's good that she's going to be doing her things because um, I, I am I am one of the most uncreative people out there. <laughs> I'll admit it myself. And when I see interesting things that other people do that are like, oh, I can put my own spin on this. I do it. I put my own spin on things because I want, if it, if it is something that's going to help the community, something that's going to help people out, I want to be that person that puts that kind of stuff out there, that kind of energy out there, like what Sayu is doing. And this is very good for Sayu. I, I, I love that she's planning things out. I love that she's doing things like this. Uh, we love you so much, Sai. You're an inspiration to a lot of us. You also saved a couple of us too. You're amazing and don't ever change who you are. Saya says, you guys save me every day. I'm honored if I can do any little thing for you guys back. Thank you for being my heart and soul. I feel the same way. Uh, Shiny Pippa says, I, like, I want to try to be that person for you guys to distract you guys from the, the realities, the harsh realities that happen sometimes in life. I may not be able to be the type of person that Sayu is, for everybody uh, in my community, but I do want to be uh, something like that for everyone that watches me. Trust me, you do so much for us. Without you, I'm sure I'm not going to be able to be here. Fitting is mutual. Never underestimate how big of an influence you are. You have. When we say we love you, we mean it. You, uh, you and the syndicate are my second family. Thank you, Sayu. Thank you, everything from for everything. You're always in your own worst critic. Grixit, which is a big guy, big big creator, as you can see here, 14.2 bigger. Uh, but from viewers perspective, we can see the hard work you put in and appreciate the lengths you're willing to go to to give us entertainment. Exactly. Expert Armchair also did something here, which says the anxiety around delivering a product worthy of your audience's attention can hit really hard. I have that all the time as well. However, the fact that you care enough for that to be a concern and your willingness to keep fighting through that to deliver good content always are the two of the many reasons why I uh, and many others will still be here regardless of how many rough patches come up. You're way more than your circumstances, especially to us. Expert Armchair saying that about her is amazing. 
And that's where I'm going to leave it for Sayu. I'm glad she's having good positive vibes, good positive things, and I hope it continues for her. Like I said, I like pushing indie projects up, pushing things like that. I have my own VTuber showcase that I do every single day, twice a day, on two videos. I like I do it on, once on every video that exists on my channel, at least for the last 40 something odd videos. We are on like the 44th or 45th person that we're doing it on. So, you know, go check uh, the description down below and check the um, the pinned comment if you want to be a part of it. I do have the form there. Now to move on to what's happening here, uh, a small VTuber, Ringtail VT, is doing VTuber Direct, kind of like, you know, how the, the Nintendo Direct happens, for a special event focusing on spotlighting fellow indie VTubers in the community, including dedicated clips section where you can have your clips featured. That design made me think for a split second Nintendo has VTubers before realizing it's an imitation. Nintendo lawyer observing this closely, it's so cool. It is very cool. Um, some people, are just wanting to s on something just to s on something but the uh, the way that they responded is perfect spotlight for indie vtubers to have a chance to share with their world who they are and what they do and you believe that's dumb that's all right it's your opinion elaborate no you yeah people just elaborate on that and of course like i said i do something similar this is actually much bigger than what i do but i try to do my part to help the community as well like i said with the vtuber showcase description you know everything you can see there but i do like pushing other projects I don't care who it's from. I like pushing other projects because it is a good part of the community and it is something that is very welcome here. Here we have more craziness that Twitch is doing, craziness that YouTube is doing. VTuber Ruby Vox has been given a warning on her Twitch account. A warning for what they're saying. Um, this is supposedly saying constant content classification, sexual themes. Sometimes the concept do not violate our community guidelines, but we are appropriate for all Twitch users on streamer VOD. So they gave her an actual warning. Based on review of your activity or content, we have issued a warning on your account. For sexual content sometimes if you're if you're a lewd tuber uh they'll do that um so just confirm committed to keeping um, i'm sure they got mass reported uh that's usually what happens with these because twitch doesn't actually go and do these things but maybe mass reported they looked you know uh maybe she shows a little little bit of skin which is weird because you know the uh the youtubers the actual twitch like irl people show a lot of skin a lot of times if you look at the hot tubs and streams streamers things but here's the thing where it happens if you show skin, like for example, the hot tub streamers ones, but they all mark it as, you know, over 18, then that's when they you don't get warnings. Um, the issue is with VTubers, since, you know, it is drawn, uh, they want you to follow the same rules. They want you to follow the same rules. A lot of VTubers don't understand that. I have come to understand that, you know, uh, looking at some of the people that I watch, uh, they always have some kind of content flag on them because of the fact they are showing a lot of cleavage, or like even Tricky V has content warnings on her stuff um, because of the same fact. Uh, they You show cleavage, you show a bikini, you show something like that. You have to classify it as not for kids, as maybe a little bit more mature. Because of the fact Twitch doesn't want 13-year-olds or even 10-year-olds that sometimes are on these platforms to see that. That's why all the hot tub streamers ones, a lot of them do have content classifications. And they do get hit with the same type of stuff that Twitch hits the VTubers with. From what I have understood and what I've seen when I've researched it a bit more, it's because just the wrong classifications. They consider any cleavage, any uh, thing like that, that is that shows a lot more, even for IOL, they consider that as not for kids. So just like in YouTube, you have to mark it as such or you will get warnings on here. Now, when it comes to her, uh, Ruby doesn't seem to be somebody who is specifically like very um, lewd overall. And let me take a look at her content to kind of give you an idea of what she does. I might get hit myself, but give me a second. This is her model. This is the model that she has. So yes, you have cleavage, but this is nowhere near as bad as I've seen other VTubers and other actual IRL, uh, IRL tubers, IRL Twitch people do nowhere near as bad. So this one is one where I'm like, what the heck is going on with Twitch? Because this one, I, I really can't understand. Uh, maybe some loot tuber stuff happened. Um, like saying, don't send any Ruby nudes. Maybe that is what got hit. I don't know what the heck is going on there, but it's a weird thing to happen. Um, they never do anything about it. I'm not partnered, so I don't have any reach to affect them. Just hope it changes one day. I'm tired of people being able to falsely report me to harass me. And that's what happens. It was a false report. Because if you can see, yeah, she has, um, you know, a little bit of tan lines. But look, she has like 90%, like 80% of the booba covered. Like, it's not like other VTubers that I've seen or other people that I've seen that have like, only maybe 20 or 30 percent of the booba covered those i can see why if, if twitch does something just me seeing just kind of seeing the other side of the coin i still don't get it and i still don't understand it but i can kind of understand when you have like 
extreme jiggle physics and a lot of your booba showing and um like almost like a stream bikini type of thing i can understand that but uh if you have this which is like even if you go to like a beach with this that is seen as conservative this is seen as very conservative even irl this would be seen as conservative that's why i'm confused why they decided to do this so bias against vtubers they do something against them or something like i'm seeing both sides i'm being objective um but the owner of twitch is almost all his follower channels of women in skimpy clothing that's the thing don't do double standards if you do this to a vtuber do this to your irl tubers as well do this to your irl people as well don't just put it on one I can see both sides, but if you're going to hurt them for this, then hit all of your, your IRL ones as well that don't have proper classifications. That's what I'm saying. A funny little meme post, a little thing that Kobo put. Everyone knows Kobo is kind of like, she is the brat of Hololive. Not actual brat, but you know, she, she acts like the brat, like the, the spoiled child of Hololive. Because everyone does spoil her a little bit. But you know, she's not actually like that, but you know, she does her thing. Uh, she says, Mama Wawa, which is Raora, is cooking pasta right now. She asked me which pasta do I like. I said, anything else okay. They all taste the same, only different shape. Then she asked me to go out. She's like, get out, get out. <laughs> she got disowned immediately by Raora because of the, the pasta thing. At least she didn't put pineapple on pizza. You know, that kind of thing. So <laughs> a little bit of levity for you guys. Thank you, everybody, for joining me one more time with the VTuber Showcase, where we showcase small and medium-sized VTubers who are just wonderful creators trying to get out there, trying to be seen in today's market. Trying to give them a little bit of a limelight here. Today we have Hot Coco. She is a full-time content creator and she does not do any lewd content. Uh, her pronouns are she, her, of course. At, they are the business loving maiden whose art is guaranteed to soothe your soul. Hot Coco is a variety streamer who enjoys cheeky digital art, JRPGs, anime fighters, and puzzle games. Primarily delights in entertaining, horrifying her audience with the bizarre creations, which are fun. It's always fun to have these bizarre creations to show the personality that you have. That's one of these wonderful things about content creation. You can show your personality. Often turning otherwise normal requests from her chat into inconceivably idiotic S posts, which is good. Uh, she likes the anonymity and creativity that VTubing shows. Is willing to collab with other content creators. Uh, big projects plan. Another COC 101 cursed art class. Making a game. Possibly. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, continue to amuse others with horror and silly content, which is wonderful, of course. And I want to show you guys some of the content that they create. Let's take a look at this, which is something that went through on um, on Twitch specifically. Uh, let's make sure that I have everything set up correctly for you guys. Here we are. Oh, I just hold the pose. <gasps> Whoa! What the heck is that? Woke! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> the left is not her. It's not her actual model, but it is. Um, it is just. It is what it is. It's a cursed thing. It's. It. She. She does her little cursed moments like that, but her actual model is more like this. Just giving you guys an actual First feel for the actual sandwich. model there. Really so nice 3D model. I don't know exactly what 3D modeling software she uses, but really nice 3D model. Um, I'm, I don't know also if they've done it themselves. It looks like they might have since they are an artist. Wow, it's just really good. And of course they do this little cursed showing here. You can see here, little cursed, cursed VTuber stuff. You know, little art stuff she does here. Um, doesn't uh, do lives here. She pretty, primarily just posts content in this area. A lot of the cursed content that she has from her stream, she'll post it on here. So, uh, you know, you little things like this, like, yeah, get as much cursed art as you can. Just go show them some love if you can. Uh, take a look at their channel and see if it's something that you would enjoy. Thank you so much, Hot Coco, for being a part of this VTuber Showcase. I hope that I can help you out a little bit in, you know, spreading your brand and making sure that you get seen by many more people. All for right now, of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys, and I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord, there's Twitter, there's other places that you can check me out twitch etc and also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy thank you